this is a £1,000 gaming laptop. This is soon to be a £1,000 gaming desktop PC, which is going to offer better value for money, better performance, better gaming frame rate, and ultimately, in 2022, which should you buy? I smell a... I smell a box falling over. That's ruined the dramatic start. Can I try that again? And in 2022, which one should you buy? I smell a PC-centric test coming along. It wasn't even a good line anyway. The laptop we have here costs at the time of filming £999. This comes rocking an NVIDIA RTX 3060 mobile graphics card, an Intel i5 6-core processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabytes of NVMe PCIe storage, and then this rather handy-dandy 144Hz display. All in all, it's all right, this laptop is tough. It's built to withstand things like that. But that was definitely not part of this video. Maybe we won't spin it next time. All in all, this is gonna be a brilliant gaming machine. And if you do wanna play the latest AAA titles, many of them at high refresh rate, then clearly this is gonna be a brilliant rig to do it. But most importantly, this is actually available. I think you can still get next day delivery on this thing. So to say that this is in stock and available, I think is an understatement. But now let's move on to our desktop machine. And a massive thank you to Gigabyte and Nvidia for actually sponsoring this video and making it happen. As a result, we do actually have a selection of different parts and graphics cards. We've got a 3060 and we've got a 3050. And the reason that we've got both of them here is because realistically availability, as we know, isn't exactly the best. And actually getting hold of a graphics card isn't necessarily gonna be the easiest thing in the world, which is why realistically, I think for a 1000 pound gaming PC, you're gonna be looking at one of these. But of course, this is the issue really, because you don't necessarily know what price you're gonna be paying for this. If you want one that is readily available, you're gonna be paying more. Whereas if you're willing to wait, maybe join some stock lists, some stock alerts, things like that, then you might actually be able to get one for RRP or at least very close to RRP. This is why the base rig, I think, let me just double check, I have priced up at around about 640-ish pounds. So that gives you a budget of 360 for your graphics card, which if you could get at RRP, I think this will actually meet the bill. Whereas if you need something a little bit more immediate and you're willing to pay more for it, then you're probably gonna be looking at a 3050. I do realize that this is always a tricky subject to actually talk about, but there's no way around it at the moment. Until the stock shortages do improve, and I'd like to add that it's not just Nvidia and Gigabyte and it's happened again. That this is happening to, this is a global thing for all sorts of products, regardless of whether it's PC related, cars, so many things, it's definitely gonna be a little bit tricky to get your hands on the good stuff. So in terms of round one, it definitely goes to Team Laptop. As I say, next day delivery. However, you can't ignore that building a computer is fun. But obviously you get the portability with a laptop. Look, you can tuck this away. You can put it in a bag. You can get a new partner and go over their house and play Age of Empires instead of cuddling together. Who needs bodily warmth when you've got laptop GPU warmth? Oh, I'm standing on SSDs. But yes, let's actually get this system built up. I've shown you many times how to build a computer, so if you do want to see a full guide, you can find that in the top right corner of your screen. But for now, we're actually upgrading a rig that I made yesterday, or I suppose it was a few days ago now, with a Gigabyte B560 Aorus M motherboard. This is part of the Elite range, and as you can see, it looks pretty cool, pretty jet black. But more importantly, this supports the i5-11400F, which I still think is probably the best gaming CPU in terms of value that you can get right now. I know there is a newer generation of 12 400F, and we will be testing that in a bit, don't you worry, but because B660 motherboards that are required for that chip are actually a fair bit more expensive, at the moment this is probably going to give you better bang for the buck. But it's also pretty good for this rig because it's almost like the desktop equivalent of what we've got in that laptop. Both of them are six cores, but of course this will use more power, but in return you should have more power. So let's open up our slot and drop in our chip. Our thousand pound budget also allows us to not use this horrible stock cooler and get something a lot more dramatic. It would be a lot more professional if I'd actually got these things earlier, but no, the cooler we're going to upgrade to is the Hyper 212 Evo V2. Costs around about 30 pounds and it's quite literally a game changer because your PC's not gonna make a racket. So let's plot this on there. Just like our laptop, I'm also using 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabytes PCIe SSD. But obviously you can grab whatever you want because it's a desktop computer. It's a lot easier to upgrade and it's a lot easier to configure in the first place because you can get whatever you want. Don't tell anyone, but I put this on back to front. But I'm gonna change it now and then no one would ever know. So shh. Install our motherboard. And I would definitely say that if you can grab a micro ATX case, 
or a full-size motherboard for an ATX case, it would look a little bit better because I'm not a fan of these cables sort of draping down at the bottom. I know it's not the end of the world, but I think this does show off the compromise you'd be making if you were trying to save the money. You see, that's what I'm here for, not to make perfect builds every time, is to show you the mistakes that can be made. I'm not an idiot. Here comes the exciting bit, the graphics cards. Let's have a look at the 3050. This is the triple fan gaming OC version. It's nice and lightweight. You've got a little bit of a pass-through design here, one eight pin on the top, and then four display outputs, two display port, and two HDMI 2.1. But I don't want to use this today because of course more performance is always better. So if you can grab yourself something like a 3060, but maybe in a slightly lower skew, is what I would always recommend doing. Because it's all about those frames. Obviously it does mean you're gonna get a slightly smaller graphics card and I suppose your rig might not look quite as tip top, but this is still a brilliant looking card. And especially if you are gonna go for like a smaller PC, obviously a smaller graphics card is actually gonna be a big benefit. This 3060 also has more memory as it rocks 12 gigabytes of VRAM rather than the eight. Oh, I need to take this top slot out. That you find on the 3050. Can we get it in the bin? Not today. And then we'll drop our card into the top slot, get that PCI Generation 4 performance, screw it back down, plug it in, and then there we have our finished gaming PC, including Windows, roughly around about £1,000. We've also upgraded some fans for the way from the last rig. I've got two on the front here. So we've actually got some decent ventilation. I suppose something else I definitely should note as we test whether this does actually work is that I'm not factoring the costs of keyboards, mice, trackpads, monitors. At the end of the day, if you already own a full set of peripherals and you've got yourself a gaming monitor or maybe you want to play on a TV, then you wouldn't be buying any of that stuff anyway. And besides, if you are playing regularly at home, I would actually advise getting yourself a bigger monitor to play on, even if you are playing on a laptop, because it's just going to give you a better experience. Moment of truth. There we go, we've got some RGB, ladies and gentlemen. Gigabyte orange. Ta-da! First time, baby! So I think we can jump straight in with some of our benchmark tests. Let's jump straight into God of War. But can I just get distracted for a second and say how appreciative I am that Gigabyte have actually put the power connection on the back of the laptop? Why is this not standard? It means you don't have to worry about the cable or the mouse, and it's just always super neat. We will open up frame view so we can actually see our frame rate and then our thermals for both the CPU and the GPU. We will then start recording with shadow play so we can actually see what we're doing. And then we'll navigate to the settings menu and make sure these two devices are set up identically. So we're gonna use DLSS, which is Nvidia's deep learning super sampling tech. Then we're gonna go into the graphics menu and we're going to use the high preset. And on our desktop PC, we're getting around about 90 frames a second, 93 at the moment to be exact. This is also a title that uses Nvidia's reflex tech, which means your reaction time is just that little bit better. It improves the graphics pipeline, so you're getting lower latency, which means it just feels a whole lot more responsive. Controversial opinion maybe, but I actually much prefer this game with a controller. I mean, it's technically a fighting game though, right? So I think that's fair. It's also worth paying close attention to both the GPU and the CPU utilization because this is where laptops can actually falter a little bit. Sometimes you can see that the CPU just isn't quite powerful enough. And it does actually hold your graphics card back a little bit. You can see that this isn't happening here though as our GPU utilization is pretty much bang on 100% at around about 98, 99. I do also want to test thermals, which means we probably should put the glass on this chassis. Otherwise, it's not fair. But while we're letting that hot up, I think it's time to actually pay attention to our laptop. We have identical scenes here at the moment. And in terms of frame rate, you can definitely see the difference. 87 FPS versus 105. And the laptop is also making a fair bit of noise. It's not too bad for a laptop. Sort of chilling away there. But because of the thermal limitations of lower space, it does mean that our PC is going to run a whole lot cooler and quieter. Much more chill. I mean, it's still a lot smoother than it was on the original PS4. You think that was 30 FPS and this is 78 with reflex? Like, obviously it's night and day. But let's move on to our multiplayer titles with some Halo Infinite. Let's set this to ultra settings. Yes, please. Around about 90 to 100 FPS on our desktop. It's gonna be a bit of a lonely game if I'm just running around by myself. Don't even have anyone to shoot. I just have to blow myself up with a grenade, look. Oh, I can't even do that. I'm useless at this. There we go. There we go, boys. 
Hooray, I got someone. I'm gonna do something a bit different this time. I'm gonna use the laptop, but on the monitor. But this is what is so important about using a laptop. It doesn't have to be a laptop. You can use it as a desktop computer if you like, and then when you go traveling, you have all of the benefits of a portable machine, but then you get the best of both worlds. You're not limited to this physical box that, let's be honest, can't really be moved very easily. I know there are gonna be people in the comments saying, yes, you can, I do it all of the time, but compared to a laptop, come on, it's definitely not the same thing. Think how easy this is to quickly plug into your TV downstairs and play Halo with a controller, for instance. This is a little bit more of a behemoth. Plumb in the exact same settings. Oh, actually, no. It seems there's not quite enough in this laptop GPU. So I'm gonna have to turn the texture quality down to high now. And that is very close, actually. I think about 10 FPS less, if that, around about 80 FPS now. You just wouldn't notice the difference between these two systems, you really would not. These are the same settings, still at 1080p, just with slightly lower textures, but that's not actually gonna affect the frame rate anyway. That's impressive, actually. That is very, very impressive. Let's try some Apex Legends, shall we? And we're gonna start with a laptop this time because we do crazy things on this channel. Once again, we're gonna to have to set the textures to very high as we only have six gigabytes on the laptop, but everything else can go up to max. And here we are in the map, and you can see we're getting around about 90 to 100 FPS. The only thing that's a little bit concerning to me is that in terms of that GPU utilization, we're not actually able to tap fully into it, which is a little bit surprising. I would have thought that Apex would have done Maybe there's just something going on with this particular instance. Could it be fixable? Maybe. Or maybe this is just a CPU bottleneck. Either way though, 100 FPS is certainly nothing to be sniffed at. But let's try on our PC. Well, obviously our PC. Let's try on our desktop. That's what I meant to say. And oh yes, immediately you can notice a massive difference because we're actually getting a full locked 144 FPS. This game does actually have a hard lock that you can remove in the settings. You have to like add an advanced launch option. But here you can easily see the difference. It does drop a little bit, so about 139, 140. So you don't necessarily even need to remove that hard lock. This is definitely a clear win for the desktop PC, no doubt about it. This feels noticeably smoother with all of the benefits again of having that quieter system and just overall lower temperatures. Which leaves us with just one final game. The most hardcore of the lot some Battlefield 2042. I've played 43 minutes so far. That's a lot. But this time we're not only going to use NVIDIA low latency, but we're also going to use their ray tracing cores with some ray traced ambient occlusion. High settings, DLSS, Reflex, and this PC is clearly crushing it. 100 FPS with all of those options turned on at 1080p. That is not too shabby at all. 100 FPS with ray tracing. Would I choose to play a multiplayer title with ray tracing turned on? Probably not, so you can increase the frame rates, but it is definitely very nice to have the option. And to be fair, if you can get 100 FPS with it turned on, not really a big concern. I think it's time for some mobile GPU power. Okay, that's a new one. Just in case you wanna know what your frame rate is. Battlefield, please. Oh, am I actually gonna to need to restart this computer? For goodness sake. Oh, Windows updates. Oh, it's been like five minutes, I'm still here. It says 100% complete. Why do you lie? I am upset. Well, this is definitely a lot more intense map, so it's not exactly the fairest test in the world, but we are still getting around about 55 to 60 FPS with ray tracing on a laptop. That in itself is impressive. But jumping back into the actual map that we need to be testing, and we do see maybe a slight increase, but only around about five or six frames a second, so nothing huge. So realistically, if you're looking to get the DLSS full ray traced experience at high settings in Battlefield, then you definitely can do it at around about 60 FPS. But if you do want to take full advantage of that screen, then you are going to have to turn it off. So there you go then, build and test complete. What have we learned? Well, as you'd probably expect, assume you can get this PC, it does outperform the laptop. But interestingly enough, it's not actually such a huge gap. It's not like we would have seen five or six years ago. You're getting all of the desktop features like being able to record your gameplay, NVIDIA Reflex, DLSS, ray tracing the works on something that you can literally like pick up with. Oh, okay. Yeah, something you could pick up with just a finger and a thumb. This is definitely a lot bigger and heavier. 
If there wasn't a stock shortage and availability crisis, then I would say to you that unless you need the portability, or at least you're going to use it, then building your own gaming PC is always going to be my preference. However, at the moment, next day delivery really quite unlikely to be next day delivery. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. What are you rocking? Team laptop, team desktop. The full parts for this will be listed down in the description below, but absolutely smash the like button if you've enjoyed this, get yourself subscribed, and I'll catch you in the next one.